You're listening to the Australian Water Association podcast series. My name is Jo Taranto and joining me is Eric Garcin, the General Manager for Design and Build at Suez. And we are discussing biofactories using waste and resource recovery uh, for resource management. Welcome, Eric. Hi, Jo. Eric, you've got quite a journey with Suez over the last 20 years. Can you tell us where it's taken you in around the world? Yes, um, I started in Australia. I had a chance to work on the commissioning of uh, the Prospect Water Filtration Plant in Sydney, one of the largest drinking water plants in the world. Um, I, following that, uh, worked for about 10 years um, in Sydney on various large projects at the time. There was quite a bit of infrastructure uh, building on the water side. And um, I went back to headquarters uh, following that in, uh, in Paris of Suez. Uh, and run various roles. In that period, we designed and built a Victorian desalination plant, uh, which was a very interesting challenge, a uh, be- beautiful plant. Uh, and then, then take the role of, uh, took the role of CTO, uh, so heading the R&D and innovation department for the technologies in, in water treatment. And what sort of things were you working on there? So the, on the wastewater side, there was a lot of work being done on um, new bacteria, new biological process uh, with a strong purpose of reducing uh, energy consumption and recovering resources from, the, from this plant. Uh, we worked on, on various streams, uh, so new biological processes, uh, new biosolid management uh, technologies in terms of dewatering, in terms of anaerobic digestion. Uh, and we had quite a few, quite a few successes from R&D to pilot plants and, and bringing technologies to the market. So when you heard there was an opportunity in Australia potentially to um, use some of this technology, was that what brought you home? Uh, in a way, yes. Uh, more at, at that time, we were completing a, a lot of these, uh, of these developments and uh, South East Water issued a, issued a tender uh, for a, an upgrade of their uh, wastewater treatment plant on the Mornington Peninsula. Uh, they've got a strong um, target to, to reach carbon neutrality uh, fairly soon, uh, and they were they were open to to new solutions and, and innovation. Uh, they had developed, uh, I would say, as usual on the Australian market, uh, a concept design which was fairly traditional. Um, we took them on a journey uh, in terms of uh, amending that view and and defining a, a new solution with them. Uh, which involved a lot of cutting-edge innovation. Uh, so that was really uh, uh, an interactive and participative process in terms of you know, addressing the risks, see how we could best uh, deliver uh, their, their ultimate target uh, while uh, you know, maintaining a safe delivery of the services uh, for our customer. Uh, and we ended up winning this project in partnership with John Holland. Uh, and that included uh, most of the technologies we had been developing uh, and that my team had been developing in, in Paris. Were you nervous about the fact that you'd been working with this tech in the pilot phases before, but you really hadn't put it into a fully functioning commercial? It's um, ye- yes and no, I would say, because that's really in the DNA of Suez, uh, especially uh, in, in other geographies in the world. Uh, we, we are designer, we build and we operate the plants. So we are used to the strong performance commitment contractually, uh, which is not a very frequent model uh, here on the local market. Uh, but we are used, so coming out of the R&D process, uh, we've got a number of gate processes and we are ready to commercialize the product when we are, I would say, 98% sure that we're going to achieve you know, our performance criteria. So it's a very structured process. Nonetheless, uh, you know, the first is always, uh, is always uh, a, a bit of a stress. Uh, there's a lot of parameter. We're talking about something which is really really different and really cutting edge to what's been done in the past. Um, Most of the industry worldwide in all continents have been working on developing that, uh, facing a lot of challenges. So it's quite a complex, uh, I would say, solution to, to get to work properly. Uh, so yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we being mindful of the, of the challenge and, and, and we're putting a lot of energy to make sure that uh, it can be delivered. So it's not just a world, it, it is a world first, it's not just a first for Victoria or Australia, it, it's a pretty De- exciting project. Definitely, as a, as a commercial, there's been a number of trials, but as, as, a, as a commercial product with process guarantee, it's definitely a world first. 
And that's more or less the time where I got the opportunity to move back to Australia uh, and, uh, and take in charge the design build business. So I'm now in charge of delivering that process, which is very exciting. Very exciting. Well, I think, I think we're lucky to have you back. <laughs> so so what, what is the technology that you've, you've rolled out at Mornington Peninsula? So we've got a suite of, of different technologies, uh, and that's our concept of biofactory. Uh, so it's really about uh, transforming the wastewater plant in a resource producing uh, facility while minimizing uh, the use in particular of energy. So it can be energy, I would say, positive or carbon neutral, uh, but it's also about other resources that can be uh, coming out of the plant. So the first part is the biological process. Uh, so we've got a very high rate primary treatment to capture as much carbon as possible uh, to redirect to anaerobic digestion. Uh, we've got then this uh, very new biological process uh, that we call nitrochant uh, with mainstream anamox, uh, and this will be implementing, implemented in phases. Um, and then we've got new technologies on the anaerobic digestion, so we've got new um, metallic digesters uh, with a patented uh, technology uh, which make it a lot more uh, accessible in terms of capex, uh, faster to build uh, and very efficient. And then we've got a, a very new uh, dewatering product to achieve a, a high dryness uh, of the biosolids to open up more, uh, uh, more value, value routes for the, for the product. And that's, uh, that's a very interesting machine. It's also a world first. It's actually a machine that uh, was used to press um, apple juice. Of course. Uh, and that we, <laughs> that we repurposed uh, with our partner to biosolid treatments, actually working really well. It is um, not going to be pressing apple juice again, I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> when you're presenting, you know, you're pitching to a client for something that is world first, um, I'm sure in their head there is the, the dollar figure question. What, what kind of investment versus payback is there for a business or a, for a utility that wants to do something like this? We, we managed to basically uh, fit in the envelope or the original envelope of the client. Uh, what was I think very important for the client is the level of commitment that, that we could take in terms of guaranteeing the performance and when I'm talking about performance I'm talking about savings. Uh, so you know we uh, they're going to save uh, a fair bit of money on the on the OPEX and the energy savings. Uh, and that really that's what puts the, the business case together. But I think um, we addressed a lot of the technical risks together. We, we convinced them, we showed them a, a lot of information to, to, to make them confident. But at the end of the day, uh, we are going to operate the plant for 10 years and we have fully guaranteed the level of OPEX and the level of savings that they're going to do. And I think Suez has got the balance sheets to be able to back these guarantees. So that, I think that's very important, uh, that level of, of commitment that we can show uh, to make the client comfortable that we're going to achieve you know, the, the promise we make. We already talked a little bit about this, but, but why should we be heading this way for our water, wastewater treatment plants? Why is this the future? The, um, well, definitely, I think the resource recovery and circular economy. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a clear, uh, it's a strong vision within Suez. It actually both applies to the waste business and the water business. But I think all utilities in Australia are all aiming at carbon neutrality, at reducing the environmental impact. We know we are facing in Australia a lot of challenges. We've got climate change. We've, got, we've talked about the SDG goals. Um, so I think really everyone is conscious of, of, of the path uh, we all want to take, uh, reducing the impact, which means you know, using less energy, uh, being able to recover more valuable resources to put them back into the, into the economy. Uh, I think that that's a clear target, and 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 there are there's there's a lot of work worldwide, not only by Swiss, uh, being done to enable that. Uh, we just happen to be putting a lot of effort in. Our, we spend 150 million in R&D per year, uh, and and we do also operate uh, thousands of plants across the world. So we not only develop technologies, but uh, we develop technologies with the purpose of. Uh, operating them and, and delivering these results in a, in a safe and reliable way. So uh, we believe that everyone wants to go down that way. Um, there's still some work. Uh, we still see uh, further opportunities in terms of, of pushing the biosolid uh, value chain a lot further. Um, biogas also, I think, is opening up a lot of opportunity with biomethane, potentially re reusing it as fuel for transport, as carbon neutral fuel. I've been talking to uh, quite a few utilities who can, can be very interested in, in, in that. So we can, we can push that a lot, a lot further. Um, 
And what would you like to see Australian utilities and, and companies doing in this space in, in the next few years, given that the technology is now there? Um, where yeah. would you like to see them go? It's, I mean, each, I think each utility, uh, I mean, it's a huge country. Uh, each utility is, is facing slightly different challenges and, and a set of constraints which are, I think, their own. Uh, so what we saw with Southeast Water as a, as a very close engagement uh, and, and defining that solution together, I think that needs to be the case for, for most of, the, of, our, of our main clients. Um, we need to look forward, I think. Uh, we need to look long term. Uh, we need to look at the, at the potential evolution of the, of the regulation. Uh, we can see a lot of movements worldwide in different regulations about biosolid, about water quality. Um, I think the, the long term and a very holistic view in the planning and of defining the solution, I think we tend to jump a little bit too fast into the solution. Uh, we need to probably reflect a little bit more on the question and the challenges and look at a very holistic view of addressing these so that the investments actually deliver more value and, and, and in the long term. Um, so it's true that the challenges are, are pressing for quite a, quite a few utilities. There's a lot of growth. I mean, there's, you know, in Europe, for example, there's, there's not that challenge of growth in population. Uh, so the growth is... Because you all keep coming back to Australia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the growth is, is a very, you know, you need to deliver water to all of this. So that's, I would say that's a pressing need and that's something that, that, that tends to be uh, addressed in an urgent way. Uh, but I think this significant capex needs to be really looked at carefully uh, so that the future proofing of this investment is there and that we find the right solutions to be addressed to these challenges. But also to most challenges with the views of these um, carbon neutrality and, and sustainable development. We've been talking to Eric Garson, who's the General Manager for Design and Build at Suez. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much.